and welcome to Spiritual Psychics TV and this show, Being Spiritual, with me, your host, Ashley Robinson, and a special guest this evening, Mr. Phil Shaw. Welcome, Phil. Lovely to have you here, and uh, good evening to our producer, Richard. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to do this. So, folks, hope you've all had a happy Friday, and uh, you're watching this show live. I'd love to know where you're watching the show from. So we're broadcasting live out across Facebook and YouTube this evening. Um, we will get your comments if you participate in the live chat on YouTube and on Facebook. And we also know whether or not you've uh, shared the stream. And one of the ways that you can help us keep this channel 100% free, folks, is help us build the community. So please consider sharing the stream now on YouTube and Facebook. Perhaps copy the link and send it across to uh, some of your other social media platforms as well because um, the more people we've got supporting the channel the more we can share our knowledge of life after death and share the, some of the truths of spiritualism um, have you ever been to this show before on Friday night this is being spiritual this is a spiritualist philosophy show we will be doing some free readings as well but it's your opportunity to ask Ash anything throw in all of your questions anything reasonable will be dealt with uh, by me and um, Phil Shaw tonight uh, we're going to give you some readings in between the main theme that we're going to be discussing tonight folks is mediumship development and investment in you uh, so we're gonna have a little bit of a chat about that i'm going to be getting phil to introduce himself in a little while just to remind uh, those that perhaps haven't seen him for a while or never before who he is uh, and who i am because no doubt we've got a first uh, viewer one or two of you tonight let us know if you're watching the show for the first time tonight let me know now who you are and the fact you're watching it from the first show and where you're watching the show from uh, otherwise it's always great to see all our returning viewers thank you so much for giving up your friday night and spending friday night with me and richard and, and tonight phil it's lovely to have you here too we will do a couple of hellos and uh, welcomes to you in the show if you participate uh, in the conversation so that's the way it works the more engaging you are hopefully the more interactive the show is the more fun experience for everybody and uh, i'll say a special hello to you um phil and i will take turns when the names come up to us in a moment in uh, in, in sort of recognizing that okay so what we're going to do is where we rely on our producer giving us uh, the, the names, uh, folks. So it just uh, us, it'll be a bit, little bit slower, but actually as a, as a guy that works very much single task, this will, this will work fine for me. Okay. So um, apologies for some of you um, that may be receiving some technical difficulties. Um, and some of you may be receiving a black screen. So there is two video streams. You'll see uh, Mr. Phil Shaw and I uh, coming into you very soon. But I think most of you can hear us, which is great. But this is why it's really important that you participate. It's live show, baby. So we need you to let us know what's working well for you and what we need to do more of and what we're not. I think the video stream has uh, potentially come back. But um, yeah, do let us know if you can't see us, you can't hear us. And of course, if you can't hear us, you probably don't know that I've said let us know if you can't hear us. Um, so I'll be sending that signal out with my mind's eye as a psychic message uh, let us know in some way shape or form All right so we're going to do a couple of hellos and welcomes now but yeah really pleased to have today 17th of march st patrick's day uh, i was just saying to uh, to the general teacher the beavers group this evening uh, beaver scouts you know uh, youngsters sort of uh, un under about eight years old and i uh, i gave them probably one of the most uh, spiritualist of the St. Patrick and uh, Christian story, uh, flavoured with a, a bit of, uh, you know, my, my family sort of heritage, you know, via my wife, Claire, in Ireland. Um, and it was it was really interesting, actually. We, we, we told everyone about St. Patrick. What I didn't know, actually, about St. Patrick is, is he'd been captured by the Romans uh, in, uh, in, in, uh, in Britain and then sent over to Ireland as a slave. But actually, his Christianity and his version of, of the truth of that was something uh, which we became important to him and I think after about six or seven years of slavery um, St Patrick or St Paddy as he's often referred to uh, these days uh, started talking about his faith and, and how his faith was uh, was important to him and the other thing that I learned uh, today um, was about the shamrock and the free leaves within the shamrock uh, how he used that to uh, teach uh, some of the Catholic principles about say uh, you know the father the son and the Holy Spirit and how he used the free sort of uh, le uh, leaf sort of points on the, on the branch of the Shamrock uh, around that. So that, that was quite interesting. We also looked at some of the legends about him taking out all of the snakes uh, from uh, from Ireland. And the other thing that I didn't know, because I knew that St. Patrick's Day was sort of celebrated as a patron of Ireland, was that actually the 17th of March 
was the celebration of his life as it was the end of his physical experience as a human being as 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 patrick um, legend is that he actually had uh, his last day of experience on the 17th of march i think about seven eight hundred ad something like that you know so, certainly un- hundreds and hundreds of years ago uh, so happy st patrick's day to all of those that are celebrating uh, in the uk and i think parts of europe will be celebrating mothering sunday as well uh, next week i think there's also a lot of fundraising going on in support of red nose uh, day as well so it's a yeah pretty symbolic day but yeah great to Ash, have you let's just jump in there please with a little irish blessing yes please do uh, evening may the road rise up to meet you may the wind be always at your back the sun shine warm upon your face the rains fall soft upon your fields and until we meet again may god hold you in the palm of his hand lovely thank you for the irish blessing phil where did you get that from uh it just appeared today so I knew it was a message from spirit to read. Yeah, nice. I uh, I like that. Right, uh, good. I think everything's up and running now, folks. So we're going to do a couple of hellos and welcomes now. Yes. We're going to experiment with things, uh, folks, a little bit today. So the uh, the lower third of the screen, we're going to use that as a message board from uh, from the the studio I to me as well comments, as you. Uh, should I? No. Okay. Right. So good evening and welcome to you all again. Thank you for bearing with us as we sorted out some of the technical uh, issues. Uh, we've got Phil Shaw with us tonight. Phil, hi. Hi. Lovely to see you. Um, if you're joining the show uh, for the first time, a uh, special welcome. We're going to mention some of your names now. So Debbie Chard, uh, good evening to you on Facebook land. And then Phil's going to do the next one. And we're going to hopefully, if this all works well, in rotation. Gina Canzulo Coppola. Hello, watching from Boston. Uh, been to Boston, uh, Gina. Beautiful city. And I'd very much like to return sometime. Welcome. One of my dad's favourite cities, Phil. I'm particularly fan of Sam Adams beer. Oh. Uh, Zanelli Z. Delami. Good evening to you, my friend. Welcome to the show this tonight. And Jackie Monday from uh, Wimbledon, one of our Wimbledon friends and uh, lovely lady. Welcome, Jackie. EJMC, Echo Juliet, Mike Charlie. Uh, I'm a newbie. My name is Ellie. I should have read that bit first, shouldn't I, rather than trying to phonetically pronounce uh, your YouTube handle. Hiya. Shelley Stewart. Good evening, Shelley. Welcome to Being Spiritual. Have a lovely evening. Eva says, good evening from Sweden. Lovely, Eva. Welcome. I feel you said the next one. Sophie. Good evening, Sophie. Uh, Very nice to see you. And I always enjoy watching you working with Ashley. Have a lovely evening. Absolutely. Incredibly gifted uh, psychic artist. Uh, Sophie's going to be joining us in April, May. We're going to do some more psychic art live on being spiritual. Watch out for that, folks. Uh, Ian Morrison, top of the evening to you from uh, Bristol. Good evening, Ian. My camera's in frozen. Paula Jarvis, good evening, Paula, from Letchworth. Welcome and enjoy the evening. Christina Marias, good evening from Bournemouth. Hiya, Christine. Lovely to catch up with you and other friends at Spirit Seeker, our spiritual and psychic weekend retreat in Bournemouth uh, last weekend. I know lots of you folks were watching uh, live from home as well as participating in the weekend. Really fantastic weekend uh, of activity, development, companionship, investment. Uh, It was a good time. And good evening to Christine Micklemore. Hope you enjoy the evening, Christine. Kristen, thank you very much. Okay. A few um, internet uh, issues, I believe, uh, folks. Do apologise for that and sorry if some of the video uh, freezes from time to time. But um, we're going to keep calm and carry on. Melinda Melinda Lewis, from from South South Africa. Africa. Yeah. Evening, Melinda. Uh, Welcome. Enjoy the evening. (laughs) Sarah, good evening. Good evening, Isabel. Hello for the first time from Boston again. Love and light to you as well, Isabel. Welcome. Hello, Joe. You're new. Welcome. 
So spiritualist philosophy tonight, folks, we're going to be talking about mediumship development. We're going to be giving some free readings in between as well. Get your questions ready. And good evening, Rebecca. Thank you for the uh, the hearts and the the prayers. Sarah also loves Boston. And Paula we have Paula Brent. Good evening, Paula. Welcome. Helen Lisa Davis watching from Bristol. Good evening. And Mary Butcher from Portsmouth. Good evening, Mary, and uh, enjoy your evening with us. <laughs> big, big, big popularity from uh, from Portsmouth and the South Coast. We've got Norfolk Love there from NJ Watson. OK, folks, we uh, we won't get round to all of the names. There's a good mix of international guests there this evening, uh, right over across the pond and, and uh, over to the, the continent of Africa. Lovely to have you here. So we're going to be chatting about mediumship. And we, in particular, we're going to be talking about development and investment in yourself. Um, for those of you watching the show for the first time, you know, as well as uh, talking uh, spiritualist philosophy, I am a spiritualist medium and uh, medium counsellor and celebrant uh, based in South London in Wimbledon. Uh, that's my base church, my home church and my sister church at Hatbridge, where I've been working today. And uh, as a medium, Phil, I've always believed my job is to give evidence of life after death um, and uh, give th that personality, give evidence of that personality uh, and therefore constantly strive uh, to to be at my best uh, as many uh, of opportunities as uh, as I can. Uh, so, Phil, you've come and joined us uh, tonight. We know each other from Wimbledon, but tell, tell the folks a little bit about yourself. Yes, well, I've been uh, working as an evidential and trance medium for nearly 25 years now. And I came into it, I used to think by accident, but I see now by spirit design that uh, really, really got me started. Uh, trained at the uh, SAGB very briefly and then uh, did most of my later training at the College of Psychic Studies and the Arthur Findlay College. Um, I've worked at most South, for most London, South London churches, also churches on the South Coast and across the UK. And my home church, uh, as indeed is Ashley's, is Wimbledon Spiritualist Church, where I've been a member for over 40 years. So I, I demonstrate there, I teach and uh, do private readings. So that's that's really my my little potted history so far. Good. Thanks. Uh, thanks for opening us up, uh, Phil. And yeah, Melinda, I think that uh, we're, we're having general issues across the spectrum today, but yeah, some of the uh, the bandwidth required to, to broadcast back out and beam the show back out, I think some of that is, is buffering. So uh, Richard, uh, and I like to say his technical team, but that's also Richard uh, doing what they can to, to get it out. So do bear with us, uh, folks. Elizabeth Kennedy Mason, good evening to you as well. Someone's given a shout out to my mum. She'll appreciate that because if my mum and dad are watching, uh, yeah, my dad sometimes forgets to... Uh, to say my mum. My mum always tells me, she's I was there. I was like, I know you were, mum. Even though I know eight o'clock on a Friday night's well past her bedtime and they've both been a little bit poorly this week. Um, so yeah, mediumship development then. So um, Phil, in, let, let's take it right back uh, to the basics. You know, I get lots of questions when people say, well, you know, where do I start? Uh, and I often say to people, well, you, the idea is go and find someone that you would choose to follow because leaders can't make you follow them. You, you, know, you choose to follow. Um, and in terms of choosing a leader, uh, I talk about the a circle leader, uh, find a good spiritualist church or centre, someone uh, that is well and worthily recommended and uh, find someone that you're inspired to follow, join their circle. Um, and then actually you sort of start from there. We tell people, we send people over to the sptv.uk directory uh, and obviously through, through word of mouth. But, um, you know, keep, keeping us right at that sort of first chapter then, Phil, you know, where does it start when we're talking about developing as a medium? We've got obviously continued professional development, but right at the beginning, where and how does it start? Right at the beginning, I think it's very important, Ash, to um, recognise the kind of signs and the signals that you are receiving from spirit. You may not know that you're receiving them from spirit, but you will know or be aware that there is certainly um a feeling of um being connected to something other than material life so there is an awareness there's there's a heightened intuition there are many many signs that really um you need a period of time to unravel and to try to not always understand but to appreciate as being something in your life which is perhaps directing you towards um the area of spiritual or mediumistic psychic development. 
And in that way, as Ashley says, it's very important to research the courses available, teachers available, the churches maybe that are, are close to you where you live, or churches that friends of yours, family attend, and to really do your homework and do a lot of uh, delving into the kind of courses that are running, where they're running, who's running them, and get as many recommendations as you possibly can. Because, you know, it's a, it's a vast field now, learning uh, mediumistic development. And I would suggest that you start really from the point of opening your psychic awareness, rather than focusing on communication and, and connecting with uh, loved ones and, and family and spirit. Just work on your own sensing, work on your own basic sense of smell, sense, taste, seeing, touch, all these elements that combine to bring you a much more comprehensive awareness of how you can work outside of your physical consciousness. Absolutely, because, you know, I think we, we both agree that everyone has the ability to work with uh, the spiritual gifts, you know, in, including uh, mediumship. But it's about recognizing that 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 draw or that pull uh, as well as the, the, the tools available. So let's thinking about that again. You, you mentioned, you know, one of those amazing words, communication. But um, what about that? That sometimes people refer to as like the elastic pull to do this, you know, that actually wants people to work with with mediumship. It's a gift available to everyone to work with. How, how would you describe that feeling that you felt? Well, it sort of came as a sort of, perhaps it shouldn't have come as a surprise, but it did because I was on my way to a meeting in London in Belgrave Square. And instead of going to the meeting, I was pushed sideways and I found myself standing in the lobby of the Spiritualist Association of Great Britain with the receptionist saying to me, oh, you've come to see Mrs. Northridge's demonstration of mediumship in the... Um, Oliver Lodge Hall. And I said, no, 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 I'm on my, you know, go upstairs, she said, straight away, it's starting in five minutes. To cut a long story short, I watched the demonstration. Mrs. Ivy Northage came to me and said, I want to see you after my meeting. I talked to her. She said, you have mediumistic um, ability. Please come and sit in my circle if you feel inclined so to do. So I did. And that was the beginning of a long period of training with Ivy and subsequently her guide, Chan, in mediumistic and trance development and that lasted for a period of probably four years so i thought at the time it was it was all by accident but it was very well very well carefully designed by spirit to um induce me into that into that particular role so i think you to cut a story short gash it's either that you come into it by pure intuition and just knowing and then the rest will follow or you come into it because you feel there's something lacking in your life that needs fulfilling in this sense you will try to seek out areas if you feel drawn to any kind of mysticism or spiritual work or healing any of these avenues connected to our, our work and then you will wait for the instruction from spirit through your intuition and then move move with the flow but um, it is important to get your priorities right and why you are in this Feel why you want to work in this field. Why do you want to be a medium? Yeah. Examine your motives, your aims and your goals, because if you're just in it to make a quick buck, then it's not really the profession for you. You know, it is an incredibly overcrowded profession, just like my film and TV industry that I work in. So it needs you need to prioritize really why you are doing it and what you want to do it for. Absolutely. A good good point there, Phil. So we're sort of saying, you know, rewinding this right to the beginning then about mediumship development. We, we've said that, you know, we, we both believe in the concept that everyone can be a medium. Uh, it requires an element of, of setting aside the time, understanding the values that attract you, feeling that pull and being prepared to work with the communication tools or, or, or looking to develop the tools that you do have. So we'll use that as the next stepping stone when we talk about then uh, circles and, and sitting in circles. But Paula Brent, you've asked the first question of the night, which was, why have my loved ones not come to my dreams? And I want to ask that Paula, uh, ask, answer that question with a question before bringing in Phil. So the first one says, how do you know they haven't? You know, the vast majority majority of my dreams I, I don't uh, remember but in our dream state for me the difference between uh, my imagination uh, my fantasy uh, sort of uh, in dream states is something more vivid from spirits so that, that is a difference. A real vivid 
images um, as I'm sort of coming in or out of, the, of that sleep, that's when I, I tend to recognize its spirits. But of course, when we're in that sort of mindset, we, we don't remember a lot of it. Uh, what you could do as an experiment is perhaps uh, either record yourself um, uh, overnight. There are lots of different apps you can get for your smartphones that you pick up your storing and other bits and pieces. I found myself talking at night and sometimes talking in communication with people that I only have a very vague recollection of. Other people find that they can automatically draw or write. Uh, I know Shirley Monaco from our church does a lot of um, channeled poetry. Sophie does a lot of channeled art. But actually, people can do it sometimes automatically, or they can wake up in the night and write down things uh, that have come up. Uh, so, you know, I think wherever possible, they'll try and influence us in, in our dream state. Uh, equally, we, our dream, we need our mind to be absolutely clear. And again, the next thing that we're going to talk about after uh, Phil answers this question, and we'll give you a quick uh, reading, Paula, is, uh, is about clearing that mind's eye and getting yourself into that sort of meditative state but Phil um, I'll let you come in and see if there's anything else you want to add to that question and the next question I'll get you to lead on and in adding anything Phil if you want to go into a, a message uh, for Paula and then please do that and I've, I'll draw a card for her afterwards. Mm -hmm. Thank you Ashley. Uh, yeah I'd reiterate Paula really what Ashley's just said about you know how do you know that your loved ones haven't come to you in your dreams just because you can't remember that experience it doesn't mean that they weren't there in some capacity influencing you or sending their their love and their light to you they may not appear physically so that you can recollect seeing their their physical form or their features in the dream but it may well be that they have been very very influential in terms of impressing you or giving you some form of uh, healing or relaxation therapy or whatever they're able to do from their side of life so i wouldn't necessarily rule out the fact that the loved ones have not or do not come to you in your dreams i think the more you send your thoughts to them your love to them the more that bond of attraction is operative so um please think about this in a very um kind of positive light that they are there and they are there when they need to be there when you need them to be there um so so please keep that in mind paula I'm just going to, um, if you would like me to draw a card for you. Yeah. Um, I'm just working with my regular Rider weight tarot deck here. Um, your your video is uh, currently frozen, Phil, so I don't think you'll be able to show the card at the moment. Richard's oh, working hard to try and get that back on. Okay. Unless so, you're just very still and talking in direct voice. Right. <laughs> okay. So, um, Paula, I've drawn um, the strength card for you, which is the image of a lady um, trying to... Um, contain the the lion the figure of the lion and the fact that, that the lion's mouth is open she's trying to close it and, and it suggests to me that there is some form of her saying i am bringing my strength to the fore i am recognizing the fact that i have the strength the courage the self-sufficiency to overcome um adverse um influences in my life at this particular moment in time uh, she is not going to be overruled by the lion. She is contacting her own inner strength, her own particular dynamism. And that to me, Paula, is, is very um, representative of you yourself having found the strength to overcome some either past difficulties or some present difficulties, which have been giving you some problems, but which you have now found a particular source of strength from not only within, but also from without and from the spirituality that surrounds you in your own life. So that is, that's what I'm picking up for you, Paula, right. in the um, strength card. Thanks, Phil. And uh, interestingly, I drew uh, the work card uh, for you. And I just want to say, keep on keeping on, Paula. Uh, I am aware of a, of a lady uh, that's communicating with me. This woman is claiming to be your family. She's talking about being related to you via your dad. She in herself is a, is a mother. So this would be a grandmother figure uh, on your dad's side of phone, possibly dad's mum. She was giving the letter J for Julie. Uh, J -j 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 was the, 
the letter that I was hearing. And she was just going, keep on keeping on. And she drew me to, to that card, work. There's you in, in the, uh, you know, the bottom of the, of, of the work card. You are that brass cog wheel. All the little cogs are spinning. All of it's coming together. And it's now about the interfaces. OK, we've got our physical self, our spiritual self, our emotional self, all the different bits of the body. But just work on the interfaces now. Continue to open up that mind's eye and do that achievement. Uh, you've absolutely got this, Paula. So thank you, uh, Phil, for, for your input. And Paula, that was that was your message. Uh, so we're going to answer EJMC's uh, question in a minute about improving connection uh, with yourself. But I just wanted to carry on with that stepping stone I left us at, which was that stepping stone of then getting yourself into a development circle. Um, and if it, you know, lots of you will have sat in circles before. You know, in the audience tonight, um, I can see that I've got two of my previous circle leaders in the chat right now: uh, Christine Woodham and uh, and Mary Dixie. Um, when I sat in uh, in in circle at Hatbridge uh, Spiritualist Church, uh, one of my circle leaders, uh, Jill Hay, currently lives in Spirit. She's uh, she's helping uh, influence me in some of my answers this evening. But you know, in a nutshell, what is a circle? Uh, often it's a physical circle. Uh, during COVID, we found it can be remote. Sometimes it's a line. It doesn't actually have to be in a circle. Sometimes people talk about you know pagan and sort of witches and cauldrons and getting around a cauldron. But ultimately, for me, it is that universal description of a group of like minded people coming together under the leadership of someone that they've all chosen to follow that will help with sort of ethics values and strategy around developing yourself as a medium working with uh, your strengths uh, to be at your best uh, most of the time and continuing to develop this i think lots of people uh, sit in circles all their life um Phil and I are actually part of a circle. We haven't actually sat for a while with Julie Caswell, who is also live on the chat today, um, Rose Anderson, my mum, uh, where we all set for the benefits of each other. So that there isn't a particular leader. I've, I've acted as, as coordinator for it. Um, and, you know, the weekend away, you know, I went and sat in part of a people's workshop. So for me, that concept of a circle, that concept of development is having that continuous improvement attitude. It's about taking a daily advancement. It's about investing into your yourself and it's really important i think to find people that you're going to follow sptv has got loads of great role models and you can take part enough become one of our very important patrons uh, and you can participate in some of the vis or vip stuff as well but actually try and find yourself your local church uh, head over to sptv.uk find uh, the directory put in your postcode see who's local to you uh, and get in touch with them find out what's going on uh, as well as circles in a minute we're going to talk about open platforms and open circles versus closed circles but I just want Phil to come in as we left at that last stepping stone when we spoke about doing something uh, next and I want Phil to give us his own sort of understanding about that next logical step uh, of formal sort of education. Phil over to you. Yes um, thanks Ash. Um, the, we uh, reference the formal education I mean the open circles are, uh, are all well and good and um, they can they can you know progress your sensitivity and awareness very well. There's always a slight risk in an open circle of meeting people that maybe you feel are in some way in intrusive or um, not um, uh, deliberately uh, destructive to your own development, but that bring a lot of their own problems and issues and um, complexes into that circle rather than going into a closed circle where the uh, participants have been specifically chosen and selected by the leader of the circle to work on a regular basis together without anybody new coming in for that period of time when that closed circle is running. So I would be very um, aware of the fact that you have the option of the open circle or the closed circle. And whether or not you choose to do this now, we have the internet and the, the online facilities to develop our, uh, online. I would say be careful about choosing a very well structured course if you are doing one online or if you're not doing one online then look to organizations such as the spiritualist association of great britain the college of psychic studies or the arthur findlay college uh, these are all alternatives to your local churches but as i said before i'm sure you, your intuition will draw you to the appropriate place with the appropriate leader for you to pursue your your training and I think it's always good to bear in mind that the work doesn't stop inside the circle. It continues outside the circle. Yeah. So beef, try to get familiar and try to discipline yourself to do regular meditation for physical relaxation, for balance, 
for developing also the psychic faculty and awareness of the spiritual influences around you, your spirit guides. You need to think about the qualities that are needed to become a very, very uh, proficient medium, which are the uh, your humility, your vulnerability to consider your protection, your consistency of a working method to be patient, to persevere with the development, to have courage to move outside of your comfort zone, not be afraid to fail or to say something and then the circle leader corrects you and you think, oh, I should have, I didn't do that properly. That wasn't good at all. I'm not coming next week. So use that as a, as a, as a, as a springboard to say, right, I am in this circle to often to fail and then to try again and then to learn from that experience. Gordon Higginson, one of our most famous mediums, used to say to all his students that it's always better to get a no than it is to get a yes when you are developing your mediumship because you learn more from a no than you will ever learn from a yes. And that I found to be great, great advice throughout my uh, work as a medium. Absolutely. And I, I love that. I mean, Gordon Higginson, one of our founders of, of Life After Death uh, Promotions uh, with my granddad in 1982. And yeah, same thing. My, my granddad and dad now say to me, always take that no as a challenge. Go back to the communicator uh, and interrogate. And you just mentioned there about meditation. Um, in about three weeks time, folks, uh, we're going to do a, a special on Meet Your Guides. Uh, there's lots of good meditations online. Some of the best on SPTV. We've got Reverend Leslie Moulton and others uh, that are doing that. But we're going going to do a special uh, in three weeks time all about uh, sort of guides so Phil I'll let you answer EJMC's question um, and then I'll come in and uh, add something to it and I'll draw a card for her and then you can draw a card for her as well how's that okay that's fine uh, good evening EJMC uh, you're asking can I begin with the aim to improve connection between yourself and spirit not necessarily with the aim to be a medium and let um, part of that's covered up guide lead you to where you your focus will be yes i mean uh, the question of guides um e ej uh if i may call you ej uh is um is one that um is very contentious because i think a lot of students or people that are contemplating moving into circles or are just starting to develop in circles have various impressions or um an awareness of certain presences of spirit people. They find it often hard to differentiate between whether that presence is actually a spirit guide or whether that is just somebody that is coming from spirit to assist them with their development. And there are many in the spirit world that actually do that rather than attach themselves to you as, as regular or permanent or long-term guides. So I don't think you need to get very sort of um, hung up on this or, or lose any sleep over it because it is something that will happen and develop quite gradually and quite naturally as you open your psychic awareness and eventually as you start to become more fully aware of your guide and or your guides and how they wish to work with you. Um, again, this is something that you can do in your meditation to consciously try to link with the guide if you don't see any image, face or, or feel anything in particular or just sense a presence, be content with that until the guide wishes to impress his or her personality on you more specifically. All right, um, have I answered that question? Uh, yeah, good. I'll, I'll just add a little bit to it and I'll, I've drawn a card for them. And if you want to come in with uh, with any mediumship or card yeah. as well, uh, as I say, Ellie, thank, thanks for asking questions. You, you interact with the show, folks, you ask a question, we're going to draw a card or we're going to do well, uh, yeah, Ellie, absolutely. Every, everything Phil said. Um, and, and I think what is a medium? You know, if, if a medium, um, are you the medium because you're acting as an interface between the, the spirit guide? Uh, you know, slash. When we talk about mediumship, um, we often, you know, and I, I introduced myself, didn't I, as a, as a spiritualist medium that gives evidence of life after death to others. So working as a platform medium, working in circle as a medium, Working with your guys, all of that for me is it comes under the umbrella of being spiritual. And yes, ab uh, I try every single day to improve the connection between me and spirit, my spirit guides, uh, my guide team, my executive committee. When I when I sort of work uh, work here and do that, and the card I drew for you was the Never card. 
uh, around sort of questions. So, you know, if you were just to answer your question, Ellie, with a can you improve the thing and drew a card like this, but never, you think, oh no, you know, I never can do it. That's not what this means. And if you look at this card, you've got the Black Raven, and the Black Raven is shown standing upon a skeleton in the snow. A bleak outlook, uh, perhaps, but actually, if you think about it, it's about this possibility of failure uh, and the denial of fulfillment. And what I want to just the fact there really when I drew that sort of card for you is that a communicator here was a man uh, claiming to be a grandfather, a dad's dad, who was given the letter B. Uh, and as he was coming in, he was talking about a cancerous type condition. I've had a growth or some sort of my chest. But what he was saying to me is, uh, you know, never say never. Uh, don't doubt yourself. But he is aware of the fact that as you become more aware and you awaken more, there is this sort of, there is almost like this fear of failure, this fear of not being able to, to sort of do it. And actually understanding that if you, if you measure it, and small progress develop and improve that connection first you could do this uh, but you don't necessarily have to that's what i wanted to say for for you uh, ellie uh, phil anything from a, a mediumship or really important yes, you want to add for drawn the um the tarot card of the star for you which um is a, for me a symbolic of great aspiration to move from the physical to the more um sort of extraterrestrial level and to make contact with cosmic energy, cosmic forces that will, and I believe are influencing your life at this particular time. And indeed, you're one of these people, Ellie, that I referred to earlier, that you can be tr put your faith and trust in being guided by spirit to the right people in the right place at the right time. You won't have to soul search to, you know, worry about what should I do next? Where should I go? Who should I be with? It's all taking place in this beautiful, uh, lovely angelic um, influence that is around you, Ellie. Great, thank you. And uh, Richard, was you just saying there was a response from Ellie? Okay, right. Thank you, hey, Ellie. I, I do hope you've uh, you've received that. Uh, no need to you know give us uh, give us feedback on the read, but hopefully we've oh, answered Ash, your. Can I also question. say that linking with that communicator, the grandfather, yeah. um, he's also talking about Ellie's love of the animal kingdom and how she can give so much and how she gives compassion, how she sends compassion and how she thinks a great deal more about how she can help other people as opposed to how she can help herself. So it's time Eddie, to draw that in because you give naturally to others, but start to think now about loving yourself. I know it sounds a bit of a cliche, but you deserve the love because you give so much love out to the animal kingdom and to people generally. That's it. Great. Thank you very much. Um, oh, I've just seen on YouTube. So thank you, Vash and Phil. Much appreciated from uh, from, from Ellie, um, which is uh, which is appreciated. Thank you very much. Right, we we we'll take a couple more questions, and I just want to sort of further the stepping stones again, uh, sort of mediumship. Um, we're going to do uh, you know Julie Piers. I think will be the next question then. Um, which we're going to do a special on guides, meeting your guides, developing that relationship, absolutely. Um, and then sort of, you know, continue to sit in circles. So an open circle, uh, like the ones we run on Tuesday night with, with uh, Dawn Collison, one of our new celebrants as well. She runs um, a, a Tuesday sort of development night, and it's a bit of an open circle. And open circle simply means that it's open. You know, people can join. Uh, you can pick it up. There, there's not necessarily any sort of contract of attendance. Closed circles tend to meet for periods of times and they fix their membership. You know, they'll let the first six people in, you all sign up for six or eight weeks. And then after six or eight weeks, you see what happens next. And often they won't allow anyone to join during that sort of period of time. You know, so I know someone was asking the difference between the open and closed circles. There's also this concept of, of open platform. Um, and, you know, Phil, you're about to restart our open platform at uh, Wimbledon Spiritualist Church. It's something we've done for over 100 years. Uh, at Wimbledon Spiritualist Church. Uh, my grandfather, uh, who wasn't quite a founding member 100 years ago, but yeah, certainly, certainly 40 odd years ago, used to talk about the concept of a sympathetic audience, you know, and being a good member of the congregation, not feeding uh, the medium, but sort of giving information. So uh, we've got open circles, we've covered off closed uh, circles. Tell us a little bit, Phil, about uh, the open platform at Wimbledon and how you lead that. Well, the open platform actually is really designed uh, not only for um, beginners or not only for um, people that are curious to um, experiment with their mediumship in ways other than they have been taught to um, express themselves mediumistically, but also to um, encourage um, furthering their, their spiritual aspiration in terms of um, either inspirational speaking 
or, or uh, talking about um, spirituality in a philosophical way and perhaps even not going into a full trance but indeed channeling in some form where they're fully conscious the um, uh, words of either their guides or higher cosmic beings and just it's a platform really for experimentation not just for the giving of um, evidence between spirit communicators and uh, recipients so I like to encourage people to really come out of their comfort zone and just um, uh, do or give whatever they feel inspired to do on that particular evening and of course it's always nice to have an audience there to watch and to listen and to be a message recipient great thank you and we'll answer julie's uh, question now. it says what is the difference between mediumship and clairvoyance as they both get messages yeah absolutely and julie i, I like the, the plain english sort of approach to it there's very little difference and if we actually break down uh, the words you know medium you know, almost like, well, it's it's not, you know, there's low, medium and high, you know, is the medium the person in the middle between frequency? You know, Ralph Steadman used to talk a lot about frequency. Higher frequency, we often think about heaven as high. Lower frequency, we think about this 3D world and our physical sort of appearance. As a medium, you're allowing yourself to come in and interpret higher signal to lower signal you're, you're acting as an intermediary clairvoyance you know a french word any palavu francais mon amis out there in cyberland uh, this evening but you know clairaudience clairsentient clairvoyance uh, it's all about the sort of seeing and clairaudient i'm hearing perhaps spirit uh, clairsentient i'm smelling sensing spirit Claire, clairvoyance i'm seeing you know i'm audio uh, also audio and visual you know i'm seeing sort of spirits so sometimes with clairvoyant and an evening of clairvoyance it talks about the fact that mediums are claiming to be seeing spirit either within the mind's eye or the physical eyes mediumship for me as an umbrella uh, covers it uh, covers it all uh, but indeed you know anyone that you know is acting uh, as an intermediary be that through channeling automatic writing poetry sort of art um that will work on that level as a spiritualist and a proud spiritualist i talk about being a spiritualist medium and a medium counselor a medium celebrant because for me the labels are plain english to describe what i do but actually you know and I, i'm the sort of person that makes the post at the church i've described double demonstrations of mediumship an evening of clairvoyance in america we talk about messages from the other side it's all about finding words which make sense to people so they understand it, what it is they're getting so yeah for me uh, there's very little difference the individual themselves will have various strengths in working through the clairs uh, either using all of their sort of senses and, and their mind's eye and it's about them finding something which works for them and you know the one word you haven't asked within that question is also psychic and for me psychic is not necessarily relying on a communicator in the same way that as in, when you're providing mediumship clairaudience clairvoyance clairsentience you're seeing the actual spirit being uh, you're getting that direct message for them for me working at a psychic level i might be working indeed with my guides and sensing spirit but i'm giving a psychic message based on energy aura frequency without necessarily getting uh, getting the communicator uh, and you can blend the both you know quite well sometimes when i'm working psychically i start and i draw a card and then clear Clairvoyantly, uh, the, the communicator comes in and, and sets himself up. So I'm going to draw a card for you, Julie, uh, and then I'm going to get uh, Phil to come in and give you a reading as well. So the card that I've drew for you, um, okay, right, so 33. Uh, and I think the number 33 is really important because I just wanted to say about the, the symbology that the, the freeze and the freeze together being really important. This card is the beast okay um and some people find that a, a bit sort of frightening or a bit frightful but you know for me and we, we did this show of ashley mills where we, we discussed you know all sorts of alternative beings i see that beast there as a protector i see the red associated with fire one of my fire protectors of the elementals but this dragon uh, bears the path fearful and magnificent in in its sort of structure with its almost like a lizard uh, and, and the sort of scales um it also stands for confrontation with the powerful dark forces or our unconscious mind also for bad temper and the spiritual side of our nature so for, for me this this element of here and actually with you in particular i'm being told about conflict and i'm being told about protection and i'm being told about your battle julie and i want to call it a battle it's not a physical conflict
great battle, uh, but this battle and about you being a light worker, about you working with the light, standing for love and for truth and wanting to do that and wanting to stand up for people. In particular, at the moment, there's been a situation involving a toxic person. I feel this is a man uh, and that you have acted up. Uh, you have done the right thing. And moral courageous, moral courage is, is the word I'm hearing here. You did this because it was the right thing to do even though it wasn't necessarily in your best interest, it was in the best interest of the situation. And with that, I just want to talk about the fact that you're looking to suppress, uh, you understand the elements of dark nature and you want to protect and to guard. Uh, you want to think about uh, basing yourself like pyramid concepts of energy uh, and sitting in that power. And it's this level of, of temper and controlling sort of temper and managing that. So that was the card I had for you, Julie. I hope that uh, makes sense and we've answered your question. I'll ask Phil to, to come in here uh, and give uh, a bit of uh, an add to, to reading for you. And then Phil, you take the next question and, and you run with that. All right, thank you very much, Ash. So, uh, good evening, Julie. And uh, as Ash was talking, I was linking with your, your grandmother on your, your mum's side of the family, so your, your, your grand. Um, who was a lady who was very, very fond of talking and conversing with other people and getting her point across, being very um, emphatic, not in a dogmatic way, but making her point understood. And she's talking to me about the fact that quite often you hesitate, you pull back, you don't actually speak your mind in a situation that would actually benefit from the advice that you have to give others. So she's encouraging you to work more in that direction. She says that you have got the words there to put into a very good, interesting sentence, but that you haven't got the confidence yet to, to, to let those go, to let them release, to let them be a benefit to other people. She's also talking about you not holding back your talents because you're very hesitant in one area of your life with one particular creative ability that you've been moving forward with, pushing, holding back, going forward, holding back. And she said, now is the time to really, she says you're looking into a mirror and sort of studying yourself and not quite understanding what it really is you're looking at. So don't be so self-analytical. Just, just move with your talents and put yourself out there in the arena now, um, Julie. She's also given me one dahlia flower, a dahlia for your mum, to give to your mum. And that's her message for you. Thank you, Julia. Nice, uh, not nice um, um, message there, Phil. Thank you for that. And Julia, I hope that, uh, that all makes sense to you. Um, I just I love that collective conscious. I was just about to say, I, I was looking at the comments as well because we've been having some tech problems. And Richard, uh, you must be psychic, sir, because I just wanted to add some context to something I just said there. So Angela's question is, should you take advice from spirit retoxic people in your life? Uh, and I wanted to, to apply a bit of context to that because I, I think a, bit, a moment ago I mentioned about that. Ultimately, folks, we are and we always will be our own you know we act to our own free will and accord okay we've got personal responsibility and we've got free will so every single decision we make we make uh, for ourselves okay it's one of the gifts uh, that we have um i often ask spirit for advice for for guidance um but for one of the better of a words it's an opinion particularly when you're, you're tapping into uh, you know past uh, loved ones who have passed over effectively what you're saying is you know nan do you have an opinion on this? Now, my nan, yeah, my nanny Hazel in particular, my, my dad's mum, I used to ring her up all the time when, when she was alive and I'd always ask her questions from what I should do with school or girlfriends or, you know, who should I play rugby for? You know, what should I do sort of work-wise? So my nan's opinion meant a lot to me. I didn't always agree with her, uh, but I often took great comfort in, in that opinion. So when she comes through the spirit, I am, of course, interested in her opinion. So Angela says, should you take advice from the spirit? If you would have taken advice from them, when they were alive, um, then their opinion can be part of your facts so that you're making a fully informed decision then yeah, absolutely. What I don't think we should necessarily do, in the same way I, you know, I love the cards, we're working with the cards tonight, is I don't let them do anything other than steer or direct me. They don't make decisions for me. I don't let the cards make decisions for me. Spirit don't make decisions for me. And in the same way with warnings, you know, they spoke about this this beast and Angela about you, uh, when Angela was Julie, wasn't it, tackling this sort of element of toxic masculine energy uh, that's around her. That is also their opinion and what they recognise as something negative or something toxic. Uh, but again, you've got to look, look whether or not it's an opinion. Phil, anything you wanted to add to Angela's question? Um, not really. I think um, rely on your own uh, personal uh, feeling and intuition 
about people as well, Angela. Don't don't rely totally on spirit. I mean, spirit will offer um, advice or suggestions if asked. They won't bulldoze their way in and say, this is what you should be doing. Don't talk to this one. Don't associate with that person. I think it's a, it's a question of getting a nice balance between what you feel intuitively and what your conscious, intelligent mind is, is, is feeding through to you. And also what perhaps you may be receiving in a meditational state or in a, in a state of contemplation where you're linking with your, with your guides and inspirers. Absolutely. And just to add so from a minute, I drew, I drew a card for you, uh, Angela, as well, which is the Voyage. And I've got this beautiful sort of ancient ship, perhaps in ancient days, going out and re-exploring or rediscovering things uh, which they think they're doing for the first time. And with you, I've got you on a bit of a journey. OK, uh, Angela, and I think spiritually talking about I want to gently continue to encourage you. Keep on keeping on. And in terms of the undiscovered lands, this is about you working with um, dormant or growing or developing skills and new skills uh, coming to life uh, about you finding uh, this voyage across that inner world to an uncolonized areas of your own sort of psyche so enjoy the journey enjoy the experience know that you're in charge i'm putting a compass uh, in your hand as i do that and as if i may say so i've just drawn an ascension card for angela which uh, talks about lord kumeka and it says your guidance is to breathe Kumeka's blue topaz light into your aura. Expand your attitude to one of unconditional love, acceptance of others and personal responsibility. Kumeka will open new doors for you and guide your footsteps towards enlightenment and ascension. Thank you. No, lovely. Angela was just thanking for that and confirmation there about uh, being on a journey. So good question, uh, Angela. Keep your questions coming, folks. We're going to take some more questions now because they're all about uh, mediumship and uh, divestment. So, um, Phil, did I just say I was going to let you lead on the next question? You did. Then please let, lead on Laura's question and I'll come in and add something perhaps. Uh, oh, to the I like a bit of a lead. Right. OK. <laughs> OK, question for Laura. Okay, sorry, Laura. OK, question. Do you believe in the mythology? There's so much I want to say and share actual photos that people don't believe in the existence of other things like fairies after life after death. I've been wanting to share life continue. I want to share this experience of my vision. I want them to see. Yes, Laura, um, that's very, very important. I'm glad you mentioned mythology because mythology is such a process. It's a process of revelation. It was always to me when I was learning mediumship and particularly when I was learning astrology. So um, mythology contains very ancient um, sim symbology. It contains revelations and archetypes that represent um, our behavior patterns, the way that we operate as human beings right the way through the ages from primitive man to present day and beyond. So mythology is a great signpost. And if you've never studied Joseph Campbell, the mythologist writer, please do so, which I'm sure you have, because he's a he's a, a an absolute master and a, a leader in the field of um, mythology gen generally. So um, what else are you asking? Uh, people don't believe in the existence of other things. If they don't believe, Laura, um, that's their prerogative. Um, I learned very early on never to force uh, opinions or, or aspects of spirituality that were so real and, and solid to me onto other people if they weren't ready to receive that information. So I would suggest that if you feel it's appropriate, if your intuition guides you there, and if people inquire of your knowledge, of your skill, then offer offer to them. But otherwise, um, don't, don't feel that you need to um, uh, push this on to other people if they're not ready to accept it. I hope that answers your question. Yeah, really well answered, uh, Phil. And, you know, Laura, check back uh, on the playlist some of the uh, the archived uh, shows. Ashley Mills, one of our guest speakers, um, we spoke about the Pegasus and, and unicorns. We spoke about uh, dragons, uh, you know, and, you know, I've also regularly spoke about other, other sort of beings, uh, you know, in, including my own belief in things like uh, fairies and, and pixies. Uh, it's all about different dimensions, isn't it? Different levels of frequency. And I suppose it would be quite an ignorant thing for a human being to believe where the only people in the in the universe uh, that exist uh, 
uh, with our level of intelligence. And for me, you know, we know that everything's made of energy, everything's made of atoms that are energy, and that all of that energy is itself elements of intelligence. And for me, yeah, other realms, other beings, other, you know, dimensions, all of it absolutely possible. And indeed, there's some beautiful evidence uh, from know a, a lot about this uh, so laura a question i um a card i drew for you when you asked your question uh, was the card here um which is a uh, real sort of for me a real powerhouse around feminine energy uh, it's the the mother card uh, and as you as you look at this uh, this card here uh, you see this uh, this mother uh, there she is sat in the chair she's got a baby strapped to her back as well as the two other children uh, in front of her um and in in, in sort of drawing this card for you uh, and talking about that feminine energy i also want to talk about authority um and i want to talk about authority that we i usually get from the card before that which is the father card uh, okay of authority with you and the importance of doing this in a feminine sense without overcoming um or trying to compensate uh, and the female uh, energy being really really important uh, as part of that uh sustainment um protective uh nurturing um there is this fret just around the chair that uh, this could be smothering to the individuality of the young children but the children are free to go uh, and the fact is they're sucked into the life force and they're continuing to, to go forward so uh, that's uh, that, that that card was for you laura uh, you did have a follow-up there that says i've been told i'm a psychic medium seer and i remember seeing a tribe when i was seven they had tribal lines and their lines highlight my face when light illuminates beautiful thank you very much laura for, for sharing that uh, i hope that uh, we've answered uh, your question of there uh, and also you've understood that card for me phil do, did you want to um to read yeah, for laura as well say that, um, a gentleman in spirit who apparently was a friend of your father's um he talks about um himself being a great disciplinarian and he he refers to you as being one that has mastered a great deal of discipline in her own life but is now much freer in terms of responsibility towards others Back and give more time for yourself, Laura. He says, do not watch the clock as uh, intently as you usually watch the clock, because there is plenty of time to work on and expand your own particular gifts. You don't have to get something done by next Friday or next September or whatever. Don't put a sort of a, a stamp on it as to say, I must reach this. I must have resolved this or accomplish this by this particular time period. So just, he says, just relax and let time lead towards the conclusion of your endeavours. Good. Thank you very much, uh, Phil and uh, Laura. I hope that all makes sense. Uh, there's lots of questions uh, coming up, folks. What I'm going to do, uh, just in the interest of trying to answer as, as many questions as we can and read for you, uh, again, Laura, oh, look, thank you, verification there, um, is uh, Phil and I often uh, see eye to eye on a lot of this uh, stuff. Uh, so unless the, the caveat that we fundamentally disagree with uh, one another, what we do is we just take some turns to do some quick rapid fire questions and reading so the next question that comes in i'll answer the question i'll read for them and then the question will be uh, answered by phil and, and read yeah. for phil so yeah. we'll just do that for a for a few minutes folks just so we make sure we're getting through as many of your questions as possible it's great great energy tonight on the online uh, congregation lots of lots of really good questions so i'll allow our producer to bring the the next question uh, in folks and i'll take it from there so isabel says what's the difference between being in connection with divine and ancestors or is it the same um for me it's in a mediumship uh, point of view, Isabel, yes, it is all the same. Some people talk about ancestors uh, in a, a real physical sense. So my ancestors are my yeah, my mum and dad and their parents and their parents and their parents. They are my uh, ancestors. Some people talk about as the the ancestors, as like ascended masters or the ancients. Um, and we've got people that have perhaps been living in that place I call heaven. You know, the afterlife, the place we go to uh, and our body goes through that change we call death. Um, and divine or the divine uh, or when people talk about channeling the the divine um for me it goes back to that first show i did on being spiritual which was who and what is god uh, and you know quick spoiler for you i don't believe that god personally is a figurehead person god is the word we describe the sum total of absolutely everything the sum total of all the particles all the energy all the atoms all the things all the beings 
that umbrella term. And therefore, when I talk about a prayer and I'm talking about mother, father, God, I'm using those labels uh, to channel that back uh, to the universe. And when people talk about channeling from the divine or tapping into the divine, I think they're talking about that godlike force or that that power sitting in the power, uh, chapping from it. There is also this perhaps divine dimension. And people sometimes talk about the spirit world and the life after that change we call death having dimensions to it and that perhaps at certain levels or frequencies you become more of a sort of purer love and light uh, but lots of different people have different opinions uh, on this so uh, there's me saying that uh, you know Phil and I uh, probably won't disagree on this we're coming to a rapid fire he might fundamentally disagree with what I've just said because all of us have our own sort of opinion on this influenced by our own sort of guide team but yeah uh, Isabel I'm going to give you a quick reading for that Phil will take the next question unless he fundamentally disagrees uh, the tower so so I draw this card for you. Uh, and this is this beautiful sense of strength, of security uh, at the top of the hill. There's an element of defense around this. And there's also the opportunity to see the big picture. And Isabel, what I want to say is at the moment, you absolutely get this, okay? There's a big element of emotional intelligence at play here, uh, I'm being told, where you can really see the big picture and you can see what's coming and you can see all the moving pieces and actually there's this opportunity to intervene, to intercept, particularly around preventing uh, an attitude problem which is influencing someone's behaviour. Uh, so be aware about that because you have this advantage. You really can see uh, the big picture. Uh, the town itself is something we associate with you know with protection uh, and there you are you're well grounded you're well protected and you are secured so feel quick opportunity to say ash i totally disagree with you otherwise we'll move on you take the next question and uh, read it. i didn't fundamentally disagree with any of that ash so, uh, you're, you're fine thank, thank, thank goodness collective consciousness well you can take stephen's question and read for him then right okay stephen good evening and your question is do you think that there is a lot of spiritual influence within movies there are lots of little things in films that I would have been aware of had I not been on a spiritual journey. Yes, uh, thanks for asking that question, Stephen. And of course, you've hit on my profession. Uh, I work as a casting director and executive producer in film and TV. So that is my area. And of course, I'm uh, not only influenced by the, the, the spiritual aspect of films, but, um, you know, allow my own um, understanding of spirituality to um, embrace all areas of my profession, uh, particularly when I'm working with actors, when I'm working with directors, and uh, to see how something really informs us on a, a much deeper level than just on an ordinary conscious level. And there are many, many, many layers to, to a film that a lot of people don't even pick up or are not perhaps up to, to understand or appreciate at that particular time. So I think it is good to look at a film to understand the, the basic message or the messages that were intended um, when the uh, screenplay was written and to look at how a particular film has not only informed your own understanding of spirituality, but how it has um, lifted you, how it has moved you, propelled you towards um, a much greater perhaps understanding of where you're heading and where you would like to head in in these areas of um, development and unfoldment. So I hope that um, uh, brings and of course we can incorporate mythology that we were talking about earlier into the whole arena of spiritual influence in film. All films are based characters, themes are based on archetypes and 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 recurring themes that we all recognize as as human beings through our life journey. So spiritual influence and mythology are key components of all, all films that are made with, with great integrity and great understanding of the bigger picture. OK, I'm going to draw a card for you, Stephen. And uh, working with uh, the tarot again. So I've got for you, um, I've got the Empress, which is a very nice card because that tells me, Stephen, that you are very very much opening up to your the feminine side of your personality and that informs you a great deal more than the more structured um, the, um practical nuts and bolts attitude perhaps of a of a masculine identity whereas the empress will inform you about your your deeper side your unconscious 
your um, sensitivity towards all things spiritual. And she's also a great authority figure in her own right. So she is able to impart knowledge and wisdom about uh, in, intu in, intuition, about all things that are considered to be feminine in nature. And through doing that, you will increase your sensitivity, you will increase your awareness, and you will increase, if you wish to, your capacity for mediumistic development. I hope that answers your question, Stephen. Nice, really nice answer. And, you know, folks in the chat bar, let us know about your favourite films with uh, a spiritual uh, theme. Uh, you know, I, I love watching some of the kids' uh, films recently one called soul which i absolutely love um and uh, there's some really beautiful spiritual things in there uh, so kareen uh says am i tapping into my higher power or do i just attract those who see it in me um i mean with, without uh, you know specifically knowing the, the exact circumstances it could be a combination of, of, of both but you know, when people talk about the higher power for me that is just about sitting in that moment it's about meditating it's about attuning it's like a radio it's sort of working through through the the white noise um, what i find is the more that we become aware ourselves the more we know that the radio exists the more we fiddle with the knobs uh, to get that tuning just right uh, light attracts light uh, birds of a feather flock together uh, and in appeal to now anyone that is, is is working can see that and light workers you know often are aware of other light workers is that empathic nature of picking up equally uh, darker sort of uh, souls not necessarily negative or evil people but people in need of light uh, in a dark place in a dark room when you turn on a light you become the lighthouse they they do become uh, attracted to that um you know growing up in uh, in, in south london uh, a lot of my friends that used to come out with me with the rugby club and say, Ash, wherever we go, you always attract the, the local lunatic or the local person that's sort of care in the community or sort of special needs um and it used to drive my friends mad um, and i used to think that sometimes they just saw me coming and I, w I was that light and i don't mean that from an egotistical point of view uh but a lot of those people particularly people sleeping rough dependent on drugs or alcohol or combination of both perhaps they've been exploited you know sexually they've gone through abuse in those types of situations when you are telegraphing uh, you know, that light that li and you're working in unconditional love you can attract that uh, and people people can see that uh, which is uh, which is a good thing so kareem i've drawn a card uh, for for you or i will draw a card for you in a minute um but actually i've got a communicator with me this communicator claims uh, to know you uh, they really like baby yoda profile uh, photo and they say may the force be with you uh, this person is a man this man is family uh, this man was a, a brother uh, an uncle uh, he's talking about being a sibling uh, and being a, an uncle i feel like i've got uh, on dad's side of the family to you and it's just dad's dad's brother or, or granddad's uh, brother um but because he keeps talking about my uncle tony my alive my uncle tony was my granddad's my dad's dad's uh, brother uh, he's talking about heart failure he's taking me over towards the left hand side uh, of, uh, of of his of his body um and uh, he was talking about your feminine uh, energy okay uh, he's been watching the cards <laughs> load of old rubbish. he just said load of old rubbish all this interesting though uh, and he was talking about your feminine energy yeah she's got that she's got that special gift uh, she has the ability to do that voyage yeah she's been on a trip she's on a bit of a journey at the moment and it's like as he sort of calls out to me uh, he's just talking about that the cards of reference now there is an element of him within his personality career when he's sort of making fun of it oh you can make those cards fit on anybody uh, and he's like oh because it does does fit with uh, with, with her um, and he's in a plain English, you know, and I know I'm sounding, I'm, I'm a very common person, so I might be making him sound common, but it's direct. Uh, there's no filter with this uh, communicator at all. Uh, and he's got you working hard, Kareem. That's what he's telling to me. You are working hard. Uh, all of the all, all of the wheels are spinning and you're making use of it uh, like the water wheel. Um, and I've actually got the, uh, the water wheel car. Uh, look at that card it's in the water it's only just in the water but the water is turning it and he's talking about you making the absolute best of that uh, there's a strong brick wall and the wheel is shown there there's golden fish swimming you know uh, um, amongst the wheel the wheel is doing its job um, and it's, it's taking the stream it's taking the stream and the pressure and the flow of life and it's putting it to really good use it's doing something with it and he says to me that's you you are doing that you are looking at your environment you're looking at the situations you're in 
going with the flow. You're using that flow. You're using that direction uh, to, to make bread. Um, and there is this sense of repetition. You've seen the repetition. You've seen the pattern. You've spotted that. Boom. I'm going to act. You're also looking for change and you're looking to become more mobile. The wheel is static. It's there and you're looking to carry on. You've got the repetition and the rotation of this uh, going forward. OK, Corinne, well, that's just in on that, Ash, please. Well, yes. Please do. Oh. I'm just li linking with your communicator there. He was also talking to, about Corinne as, as to let go and, and find space. She's very cluttered at the moment, both at home and in her sort of immediate surroundings and her social life. He was a person that wanted to get out into vast landscapes, to have freedom, to enjoy open space, to think, to plan, to um, just absorb everything in his life and try and process it all in a very peaceful, calmful way. So he took me up into the air in a plane flying so that you've got a big overview of your life and you're not feeling constricted by the people and the circumstances that have been getting you, pushing you into a corner for about the last 18 months, Corinne. So I hope that uh, for you. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Uh, thanks. Will you take the, uh, the next question and, and uh, do the next reading then, please? And Corinne, thank you. Yeah, good, good oh. feedback. Right. How long have you got? Uh, <laughs> Vianello, Italian, perhaps? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Beautiful name. One side of my family are very religious, although I accept their religious views. My views regarding tarot and mediumship are seen as something from the devil, so to speak. I feel that I'm on my right path, but it, it's at a huge family cost. I can't have people force views on others and do not accept when it doesn't hurt anybody. The funny thing is my one departed family member was the first to come through to me and he was confused and at a crossroads, I presume you're saying there, Vianello. Yes, yes. Um, it's quite difficult. One side of the family. It's always an ongoing um, point of contention and kind of battle, really, when we are faced with people generally or family members that have very strict um, authoritarian, often very conventional, traditional beliefs and opinions that do not allow other people uh, to express their own belief and their own faith. And that is very constricting, uh, Vianello. And I feel that, uh, yes, it is. It, it does come at a, at a cost because obviously you don't want to alienate your family or your friends or your loved ones. So I think it, while it's important to stand your own ground and to follow your own um, uh, belief and your own heart in these matters, I can understand that maybe sometimes certain concessions need to be made whereby you say, well, I'm, I'm, I'm following my own belief system, but I don't wish to uh, upset or, or disrupt anybody else's opinion. We are all entitled to our own opinion. And if your family and friends cannot accept that, that is, is their particular um, problem. It's certainly not your problem. You're doing your best. Uh, and I would rather you, you know from yourself that you are doing that and standing your ground uh, than backing off and saying, well, because people don't like what I'm doing, then I'm not going to be very popular. So um, I'll just have to toe the line. I think you're compromising yourself there to a very great extent. And I think if you can hold out and just hold on to your own beliefs um, and make it very apparent that that will not affect your love and your respect for your family and the people that you associate with, then you are certainly um, uh, uh, honouring your own integrity and your own self-sufficiency. Yeah. Okay. Nice, uh, nice answer to the question, Phil. Did you want to provide any, any more of a reading? Is it fair uh, saying they agree? Vianello, I'm, I'm linking with a, a grandfather figure in on your father's side of the family, your father's uh, father, the grandfather, who is somebody that he tells me that he kept himself very much to himself. Um, he wasn't a great socializer and he wishes that during his life he had actually expanded his awareness of other people and, and given uh, uh, freedom to his talents and his abilities more. He felt that he had put himself into a bit of a box and he's encouraging you not to follow the way that his life, he decided his life should should be and to actually now come out, which which kind of confirms what I was just talking to you about. 
come out and be who you really wish to be, who you feel you, you need to be for your own sake, for your own uh, peace of mind and your own creative and spiritual satisfaction. So that is his message. And he says, don't worry about the strain that you've had around your eyes, because that strain comes from a lot of reading, a lot of um, trying to absorb knowledge from words. And he said that will just that will just ease. But don't go at it like a, we have a saying in this country, a bull in a china shop. Just step back and let the knowledge that will be imparted to you come to you as and when and be very sparing about straining your eyes too much over a lot of reading matter. Thank you. Absolutely. You know, lovely answer, Phil. And, you know, Vianna, just, you know, keep on keeping on. I, I speak a lot about my own family and, you know, the Irish heritage on my wife's side. Uh, she would consider herself a Catholic. She's also trained to be a, a spiritual healer. But, you know, that 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 family sort of side with, with the, the Irish and the Catholicism has meant that my three boys uh, are being brought up Catholic and spiritualist. And I think that as long as, long as you keep doing what you're doing and you, you respect, uh, you know, where, where people are coming from, that they will eventually find uh, find their way. Uh, you just keep doing what you're doing. Now, folks, there's a couple of other things uh, happening uh, within the SPTV world. We're just keen to share with you now, including the opportunity to nominate some of your favourite SPTV presenters and of your own local sort of mediums, healers, centres and venues. So uh, just we're going to take a very quick break while we give you some of those adverts and then we'll come back for the last few questions and readings. Thank you, folks. Spiritual Psychics TV is hosting our annual recognition of achievements. Acknowledging those who dedicate their lives through spiritual acts of kindness. Candidates can register and put themselves forward to be acknowledged. Viewers can also nominate who they feel should be recognized for an achievement. Exclusively broadcasted live on SPTV, with 100% of the public votes being announced, on Saturday the 27th of May from 7.30 p.m. For more information please visit awards.spiritualpsychicstv.online Spiritual Psychics TV, bringing spiritual people together. My Spiritual Designs, Ethical Creativity for Spiritual People MySpiritualDesigns.com A new service offering graphic and website designs, along with video animations for those who serve spirit in their own way. We can create promotional videos with voiceovers and music, and custom-made apps. There are no monthly or yearly fees. No off-the-shelf solutions, all personalized to match your own unique vision. Our website deals offer your very own online events, service booking system which accepts PayPal and Stripe payments. A contact form, gallery, and video player. Our website deals starts from as little as £150, up to only £210. For more details, please visit myspiritualdesigns.com. Hi folks and uh, welcome back. Uh, hopefully you had the opportunity to check out a few of the exciting products on offer from uh, SPTV. Um, do head over to My Spiritual Events folks. It's a brilliant platform. I use it all the time for the organising of uh, women and, and uh, Hatbridge uh, spiritualist churches. And actually on Sunday the 14th of May, if you are 
in and around London, there's a couple of um, interesting things happening. So the first is that our divine service that morning, um, we're going to be doing uh, spirit school uh, and we're going to be opening up uh, the church for our youngest congregation, including uh, babies and, and toddlers. And we're going to be doing some stuff, uh, spiritualism in plain English. So I'm really excited about that, get my own kids involved. We've got um, lots of uh, people from the church bring, bringing their children in. Later that day, we're also going to do a spiritualist version of a Holy Communion service and flower service uh, with some flower readings. And then that afternoon at uh, probably about two o'clock, Phil Shaw and I are doing a demonstration of mediumship and transfiguration together. So all of that info is on uh, my spiritual events. But, you know, I think it's a fiver. Come and see us on that uh, Sunday afternoon. Uh, and what Phil effectively uh, is going to do, I'll get him to use his own words in a second, but he will surrender his body for, for the free will of spirit and invite them to come forward and uh, physically change, uh, influence, uh, voice sort of personality uh, while I attempt to then give evidence of the life of, of, of that communicator. Phil, anything you wanted to add about that event? Uh, not really, just that we've we've done it many times before and uh, we're sort of very successfully refining it now and it's always a very interesting uh, experience for, for us and for the um, spectators. So it would be nice to see anybody that is, in, is a new visitor to Wimbledon or indeed anybody that is a, a regular Wimbledon member. And last uh, last year, this time last year, actually, uh, Richard filmed a live demonstration at Bournemouth, uh, our Spirit Seeker event, and he broadcast that uh, out across SPTV. If people would like to see something like that as an SPTV uh, event, um, then that's something that we could potentially do. So head over to at Ash Robinson Medium after the show or the SPTV fan page on Facebook uh, and give us an idea about the types of things you'd like to do, because I appreciate not all of you are based in London. Indeed, some of you are based across the pond today. Uh, so that's the sort of thing that you'd be interested in doing. Uh, you know, give us some feedback on the uh, either the stream or over on the fan page later today. OK, folks, so give us your last few questions uh, as we work through those. We've got an opportunity to read a few. I'll take this one from Mary. Phil will do the next one. So Mary says, can spirit connect with you if you're stressed or anything, or does that put a barrier between them so they can't connect? Do you have to be totally relaxed and a clear mind? Uh, really good question, Mary. I mean, as an absolute answer, it, yes, it, it can. Uh, it, it's not an absolute law. Uh, so, you know, I'm a dad. I've got three little boys. Uh, I do a, a busy job uh, in the civil service. I spend most of my life dipping in and out of periods of, of stress. Um, what I do know is if you don't make time for your spiritual work, uh, spirits, uh, you know, take a step back. Uh, because they recognize that you've got a life and you've got to you know, experience uh, this life. So actually having dedicated time for it, I think is really important. Um, I, I admitted to Richard and Phil just before we went live, I'm absolutely exhausted today. I've been doing private readings at the church in Hatbridge today. We had a pop-up sale in support of charity. I then had to take uh, one of my uh, children to the doctors. I myself was in hospital yesterday. And then I spent the last two hours at Beavers before the show, you know, uh, running that. So I was exhausted. Uh, a little bit stressed out, actually working in that power, working with spirit. I said to the guys, it would it's picked me right up. Uh, you benefit from you know that healing plus all the love and light of, of you as the virtual congregation. So, yeah, spirit can connect with you at all times. I think when you're, you've, you're attuned and you're in that meditative state, definitely uh, easier for them. Clearing your mind's eye, you know, blanking the canvas or the mirror, looking for those vivid images, all becomes uh, a lot easier. Uh, but yes, uh, it, it can work across those different frequencies. So thank you for answering uh, that, uh, that. That thank you for asking rather than answering that question, uh, Mary. Uh, the card that I've drawn for you is this beautiful card. I do love this card. It's the uh, the peacock. Let me make sure you can see it right. See, there's the beautiful peacock in the background doing what peacocks do. You've got another peacock in the fore not showing off uh, the feathers and what's that in the grass it's a snake uh, and over there you've got the beautiful water so i just want to sort of uh, pull that card there uh, mary of a, of a woman that's claiming to be your family uh, this woman's talking about being mum's mum uh, or she's talking about being a mum's mum mum she might just be saying mum 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 several times um she's also given the letter j j for julie j jan j j j, j is the letter she was she was uh, talking about some problems that she's had. Oh, tell that away. An impact or something in, in my head. Something that's gone on with that. I don't know if it was a, a bleed or a, a clot of some sort. 
both sides, left hand side or right, headaches as well caused me a problem. Uh, she was talking about influencing uh, that card, uh, and she said it stands for freedom. Freedom, Mary, freedom. Um, I don't know why I was trying to do that in a terrible Scottish accent, but um, <laughs> right. The, the snake can be seen either as a serpent in the Garden of Eden or as another joyous manifestation of the life force. This card implies an awakening awareness and the self and the psychic force. Right. But as that card, I want to sort of say about you finding, because it's libido, about you finding your mojo back, Mary. Uh, it's really important. Not that you ever lost it, uh, but there's a sense about you bringing more of you, the authenticity of you, bringing more of that uh, to, to, to every day. And that's really important. Uh, I want to talk about this awakening spiritually and also within this feminine energy, this sort of sense of confidence um, following a period of self-reflection and investment. So keep doing what you're doing, uh, Mary, uh, as the communicator w w was saying. Um, and, you know, I'm just looking at this. I was looking up as well. I always check. <laughs> I go off script with these cards. They're all from prompts. But your libido is the Latin word for pleasure and has been used by psychologists to describe the upsurge of energy that is channeled into the sexual drive the arts and other human activities. I think we'd have to come back after 10 o'clock to talk any more about that, <laughs> Mary, and I'm not getting into your private life. But that was your card, and I do hope you understand uh, just, uh, the message. That's message from Mary. Yeah. The lovely communicator from Spirit who you used to work with at one time, going back about perhaps 30, 40 years. Um, quite a serene lady, um, very concerned about the welfare of others, um, kept herself to herself mostly as she got older. Her husband preceded her into Spirit, and um, she was a very benevolent, kind, lovely, lovely lady. She also was very fond of singing and the, and the voice, the human voice. She talks to you about releasing your voice because sometimes you keep it enclosed and it's trapped. And she would love to hear you return to some form of singing or vocal self-expression. So she talks about that as being very, very invigorating, very reviving and very um, deeply um, satisfying for you to work with the voice in that way. Thank you. Lovely. Thanks, Phil. You take the uh, the next question and then start that reading for me. Right. Kristen, hello. I have some kind of connection with spirit, but not sure what it is. Well, that's quite common to begin with um, when we are um, moving through a period of spiritual unfoldment, Kristen. Uh, we're not always sure of, of what the connection actually is. Uh, or even what it what it might mean or portend, but I think it's just as I said very early on in in our in our evening. I think it's important to recognise that you are contacting a spiritual energy, and that that spiritual energy might not at that particular point wish to identify itself or give any further information at that time, because they are working with your sensitivity and waiting for the point where your sensitivity is at the right level or the right peak to be able for them to give you further information, either through hearing, either through uh, visual um, understanding or through any other means. So don't hurry the, hurry the process. Um, <clears throat> let it reveal itself quite naturally to you. And um, it's always a good idea to keep a journal, uh, even when you're in circle or when you're doing your meditation and then just List your impressions, your feelings, your thoughts that, that were um, uh, very strong during that particular meditation. Don't write about anything that was extraneous to the meditation. Don't think, well, you know, I heard Mrs. Jones coming out of her house and she slammed the, the, the front gate. Um, but, but record anything that you experienced during that period of contemplation and silence within. And the same with your circle, your development group record your impressions, the kind of impressions that you had, you felt, and anything else that you feel is relevant to keep in your, in your, um, in your, in your journal. All right? Good. Thanks, uh, Phil. I'll take the, uh, the next I'll question. I've got one card for Kristen, yeah? Oh, go on then. Yeah, sorry, carry on. I'm just working with a pack called, it's new to me, Soul Cards by Deborah Koff Chapin, who is an American lady, and um, they're wonderful, wonderful cards. I can't show them to you because I've frozen, so... Um, You'll have to just seek that out for yourself. But um, the card I'm picking for you, Kristen, is um, it's saying to me, it's a lovely face, um, a childlike, very innocent face. And it's saying to me to preserve the innocence that you have within 
not to allow um, your feelings to be compromised by other people, to keep that sense of, um, <clears throat> they're giving me the word perfection. And perfection is referring to what Ash was talking about, your divinity, your divine self. That will always shine through you towards others. And it's also a card that's telling me that you are an observer. You look very deeply into everything. You've almost got x-ray vision. You can almost see some, a lot of things in people that other people can't necessarily see. And you receive that information, you process it, and then you're able to advise people and give them a form of counseling. I'm not saying you're a qualified counselor, but a form of, of sustaining their own confidence level through your through your gentle words and gentle appreciation of this form of innocence. So that's your reading. Thank you, Kristen. Good, lovely, uh, lovely reading, Phil. And uh, for those folks who are watching the advert, so Saturday night demonstration of mediumship is a uh, lovely man, Marcus Lips, a uh, good, good friend of mine, wonderful medium. So every Saturday night at eight o'clock, you're going to get a demonstration of mediumship, folks. And yeah, he's very well worth checking out. So Alicia Jane, uh, I'm going to answer your your question. Uh, can animals come through i lost my cat and i keep seeing a black uh, cat walking around my house and my bed I keep thinking i'm going mad i don't believe you're going mad at all uh, alicia uh, yes i do believe that uh, all animals in the animal kingdom as well as the various beings that we were just spoken about can communicate and, and give evidence of their life after life indeed i've given evidence of uh, animals lives after that life now i don't suddenly become dr doolittle and i'm not talking to cats in that way but um, if you think about the, the human language and the way we communicate although we like to think we're very sophisticated and intelligent actually we've created so many barriers with uh, languages uh, perhaps uh, barriers that don't exist in the animal kingdom you know a cat uh, from uh, africa uh, a cat from egypt and a cat from london would all communicate immediately with each other without the barrier of of language and that energy that intelligence is is what can come through and i've had dogs come through and talk about their last the last dinner they had to, you know or nicking a piece of steak or something off the table and things like that and it's often the the human being communicator that's given me more evidence of that about that but animals can introduce themselves and it can happen immediately i know there was a question earlier on about you know amount of time it can happen immediately. I've known animals and human beings within moments, seconds of their passing and going through that physical change uh, of death uh, and starting to communicate. Uh, equally, there are some people that either choose not to uh, communicate uh, or don't. Uh, those that choose not to don't have to, so they don't. <laughs> As lovely Lady Fernie at uh, Wimbledon Church that always said she wouldn't disturb. She's going off and resting, and, th and that's exactly what she's done. Uh, other people go through uh, an equivalent of of rest and recuperation um particularly if they've had a, a very difficult passing or a difficult time and they, they go off and they get the counseling and the therapy that they need and when they're ready to communicate with loved ones uh, they do so yeah i absolutely do uh, do 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 believe that and the card i drew for you uh, actually is this card here this card of union okay we've got this beautiful cup and we've got the two rivers uh, combining to form something even more beautiful and, and powerful. And if we were talking about human relationships, I often talk about like weddings um, and, uh, you know, coming together uh, at that point. But actually, I want to talk about your two lives, your, your physical self and your spiritual self, and about the two worlds combining and colliding. And also this, again, this sense of the animal kingdom and the human sort of uh, world, how that sort of uh, reunites uh, in heaven and has the opportunity to speak. So, yeah, I don't believe uh, you're going mad. I often also find that animals and uh, sometimes spirit children are attracted uh, only to houses that are surrounded by this beautiful unconditional love that are well uh, protected uh, animals just get drawn into it uh, you know as a celebrant as a, as a training minister i get asked to go to houses that are going bump in the night and people think they might be haunted or, or possessed and all sorts of things and actually when you find uh, you know beautiful well-grounded secure sort of safe houses you do find lots of lots of spirit animals and they just get attracted uh, to that light so alicia you know good question uh, I think that there's a, a strong likelihood that not only your cat, but other cats uh, drawn to, to be around you because of that love, that love you had for the cat when it was alive, the love you've created that becomes, you know, a sort of beautiful foundation for other animals uh, to, to be to be close. I also get this uh, this um, uh, this link uh, with with a communicator here. I've got a man, Alicia, that's claiming uh, to know you. Uh, this man's claiming to have lived uh, next to you uh, as a neighbour. He's giving the number four and three. I don't know if he's 
touch on Adam together. It was a number 43 and a sort of neighbor talking about knowing you as a young child. He's given me the letter S and I think he was also talking about a Stan or he was talking about standing, but I've got this letter S that was quite symbolic with him. He was talking about having a cat uh, with him who claims to know you. Now this cat is a little, uh, little ginger uh, cat with a white belly um, and the right paw also has a uh, white fur to it. Um, it's going back a little while to the time when you lived on the road with the terraced houses uh, e either side and uh, really difficult for parking. People ended up bumping up the road. Years ago, he said there was green there and the green was taken away for cars to then uh, bump up. He's talking about this little ginger cat. Uh, I had a little ginger cat when I was growing up called Taro and he was just talking uh, talking about that and as he was talking about, he's been about this animal that's claiming to know you. He said, I've got Taro up here uh, as, as well with me. So Alicia, hopefully that makes uh, sense for you. You've actually stole the final funder of the evening. We're, we're actually run over a little bit tonight, folks, uh, with the show. Um, I want to thank you all for, for paying attention and, and sticking with us, going through the adverts, for supporting this channel. I know a few of you were saying, you know, based on some of the feedback you might get on your, 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 your wall with your friends and family about sharing streams, absolutely don't worry about that. We appreciate you being here. We appreciate you sharing this channel. Do make sure you've subscribed on YouTube, that you've liked, that you're getting the notifications. I know a few of you aren't getting notifications. Do head back over to the page, unsubscribe or unlike, unfollow, and then go back through it, like, subscribe, make sure you click on the little cog wheel so that notifications are on. And then when you get a notification in your wall about do you want to see things like this, say yeah, absolutely, definitely want to see things like this. Thank you to my guest, Phil Shaw. Thank you so much, mate, for coming through. Sorry you've been Thank frozen you. in ice. Great, it's been great. Okay. Right, so R Richard, uh, producer, has actually uh, asked us to do one more question, and uh, he, he selected that. So uh, we're gonna we're gonna finish with that final question. We'll have a joint answer from Phil and I, yeah, and uh, and uh, and me. Yeah, that's fine, absolutely. So yeah, we'll we'll do that for sure. Is it this one, Richard? That's just come up. Okay, so is there anything in particular that happens when communicating with the spirit world? In what way do you receive messages? Thank you so much. Uh, so JLJ, is that Heoka? Thank you very much uh, for that question. And you're going to get a double answer. Uh, and we can both talk from our own sort of personal experience. So for me, uh, it's about, uh, you know, I often, you often see me close my eyes, but in my mind's eye, which I see as a blank canvas, sometimes a mirror, vivid images of um, from the spirit world start to overlay and then that clashes with all of my own memories and experiences to create a bit of an animated uh, video um, sometimes the communicators overshadow me become very close give me more glimpses of their personality sometimes as if they're whispering right in uh, my my ear but every single time I connect with the spirit world it's my guide team that let me know that they're ready to go uh, bear or running bear uh, one of my mediumship guides and Bob Brunton you know stand up and say right we've got ready the the, the waiting room in heaven is full of communicators we're checking their credentials they know the people you're about to read for and we're sort of ready to go that's when i'm in that zone and i'm ready to start receiving messages um Crucially for me, I switch it back off again. Uh, you know, I've got a busy life uh, with family and the kids and stuff. Uh, and I say to Spirit, thank you so much for the opportunity to have, you know, work for tonight. I'm now going to switch it all off and tune it right down, volume right down, and let my guide team, you know, run that security. And I often think about, you know, a physical army, the Air Force are out there patrolling with drones. I've got special forces out on the perimeter watching for anything which uh, might, uh, you know, do something. And it's all about that protection. And that's my grounding. So that's me open opening, closing, reversing, and being ready to receive messages. But uh, really, really lovely question, actually, for the finish on. Thank you, Richard, for using your, you know, Mr. Producer card and making sure we got that question in. That is a lovely one. I'll let Phil come in now. And then uh, JLJ, uh, I'll give you a quick uh, reading, and then Phil will do that too. Yeah, very similar to Ashley, really, um, JLJ, in the sense that I'm very aware of uh, spiritual presence, and then the presence builds into a visual image of that person, almost like a, a photograph or a portrait. And then I start to get a sense of that uh, personality, their temperament, their, um, their style of, of, of being, of doing things in their life that were particularly important to them. They impress me with likes and dislikes. Um, they impress me with how they express themselves vocally, physically. And then I might get certain um, smells that were relevant to that person. I mean, if they 
smoked or if they drank, I would smell the, the aroma of, of wine or, or smell tobacco. Uh, and there are many, many different ways. I mean, they can play music to me, which is not only relevant to the recipient of the message in a particular way, but it's also describing the kind of uh, relaxation or the enjoyment that they got from a particular um, area of, of physical experience. So yes, in that way, um, that's how I communicate. I'm, like Ashley, I'm very aware of, a, of particular members of my own spirit team that come and work with me to facilitate the communication. Uh, particularly my guide Chung works with me when I'm in trance and delivers messages to people of a, uh, a life path context and guides them in a particular direction that they may be confused about. So there are many, many different ways. And I think as you develop mediumistically, you become much more aware of how you're working and the, and, the, and the way in which you work most efficiently. So you can eventually cut out a lot of waffle and a lot of preamble and, and minimize the, the way in which you deliver a message. So it's very concise, it's very particular in terms of what that communicator really wants to communicate in terms of feeling and in terms of uh, language. So that, that's really how I'm working. OK, thank you, Phil. Um, I've got a communicator with uh, me uh, who's, who is a man is claiming to, to know you. They are a father. Uh, they give me the letter D, uh, D symbolic for, for, for dad. But I've also got a, a Dan or a Danny. Uh, da, 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 uh, I keep hearing dad, but there. And what he was just talking about, end of chapter, end of experience, conclusion, transition. OK, and it's almost like I'm bringing things to a close. And then I'm relaunching, I'm transitioning, I'm rebirthing, and I'm excited by the, the, this sort of a concept, um, rebirth, okay? And I want to just say, keep on keeping on, uh, rebirth, end of chapter, rebirth, relaunch, okay? Uh, that is what he was uh, just coming uh, coming through there. Uh, this uh, man was also talking about parking with uh, heart failure. Um, JLJ, I'm definitely keen on developing the spiritual side of me. Yeah, we'll absolutely go for that. You've got that confirmation. And Mr. Phil Shaw, who's been a yeah. wonderful guest tonight, is going to give you the final reading of the night, folks. That's very interesting, because that ties in with what Ashley just told you. Um, and I've picked out the, don't be, don't panic, but I've picked out the death card. That doesn't mean death literally. It means death, the ending of one. Oh no! Same, yeah. <laughs> the ending of one part of your life, section of your life, and the beginning of another. So it's like a tran transcension, uh, transcension, ascension experience, where you're transcending from the the physical or one particular way of operating in your life to a completely new way of operating, and how you uh, negotiate that transition. But it's very, I always see the death card as very, very positive because it's putting up, putting, taking off the old and putting on the new, literally. It's like a new set of clothes. It's giving you freedom. It's giving you self-expression. It's giving you a newfound energy and a new vision of what is achievable and how you personally have now reached that level of qualification where you can approach that new work and do it to the very best of your ability. So um, that's that's the card I picked for you. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you so much, folks. We've come to the uh, end of this uh, being spiritual, but we do look forward to seeing you in three or four weeks' time when we do a show dedicated to guides. Head over to the SPTV fan page. Do check out the website, folks. You can find me at Ash Robinson Medium, and both uh, Richard, um, Phil, and I all say thank you for your attendance this Can evening. I just say, Ash, excuse me. Could I just give you my um, mediums, medium Facebook uh, um, yeah, I address? I think Richard did put it up on the screen as well, but yeah, do it, do it now. Different one now. Uh, okay. one, it's uh, at Phil Shaw Spiritualist Medium. Phil Shaw Spiritualist Medium. Uh, yes. If in doubt, folks, head over to at Wimbledon Spirit and you'll be able to find us uh, as both there as well as on SPTV directory. Thank you. Right, folks, good night and God bless. Good night. Thank you. <laughs>